welcome back to the channel sorry it's been a little bit but hey we all got to take some breaks and i had to go up do and <clears throat> had to go upstairs and actually do some honeydew list stuff we already painted the office it looks great but we're back uh but today we're actually going to solve a really big problem that we have with this house now when this house was built it was back back in like the 2000s it wasn't really built for tv and tennis that was kind of the old way well tv and tennis are actually coming back and most of the stuff that we watch is including football because it is football Sunday uh, and we we need to watch football so most of the um, Cowboy games are actually on regular TV which has been fantastic but there's a problem um, I got too many TVs and not enough antenna outlets so I have a splitter on the side of the house it's not that big and also the more you split off the less the signal you're gonna get so some of the ones like the one upstairs in this shop, signal's not that great. It's okay, but sometimes it cuts in and cuts out and all that type of stuff. And we want to fix that. So what are we gonna do to fix that? Well, I went up there to Channel Master, and yes, they're not a sponsor. And But I did go up there and actually get a, a new splitter. Now, the difference between this splitter and my old splitter is that this one actually requires power. And what that's gonna do is actually amplify the signal so that all my TVs actually have really good signal so I can watch my boys play. Uh, so anyway, so it comes with a AC adapter, a little bit of cable, and a waterproof outlet box. Now this right here is actually gonna sit on the outside inside the panel. Uh, I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. That is a complete disaster. And is it labeled? No, no, it's not. So what are we going to do to label it? Because we only want to go into this thing one time. So get yourself something to label it. I just picked this up a long time ago for some other labeling projects, but I wanted to be able to label each wire. Now, a little bit of a background. I did actually do some cabling back in the day, a lot of Cat5, Cat6 stuff. So it was a long time ago and a lot of fiber optics. I don't have any fiber optics in this house because there's no need for it right now. So what we need to do is actually trace out the lines. Like I said, nothing's labeled. We want to label it. Which one goes where, when, and how. You could just hook a TV up to it as soon as you get, oh, I got a signal, great. Or you can get one of these guys. Now this right here is something that's left over from my cabling days, and it's a tone generator. How does it work? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Anyway, so you got your tone generator right here. And all it is is a little, little box, and it has a little battery in there. And then you have leads. So you have alligator clips or you have a uh, phone jack so you can plug this in. And what this is going to do, now I just cut off a little piece here. It's got an end on one side, but it also have uh, both uh, the ground and also the signal wire exposed. So what I'm going to do is actually take my alligator clips. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on to tone. Then I'm going to take my wand. So as you can probably hear, if I get close to this, There you go. So if I get close to this, it will have actually have that noise. All right, what I'm gonna do is go to the outlet that I wanna test. So let's say this is the wall outlet. I'm gonna screw that in, and then I'm gonna turn on my generator. There you go. So this is gonna be the wall. This is gonna be my generator wand. I'm gonna go to the outside, hit all the cables, and whichever cable has that noise, that's the one from that, that room. That's what I'm gonna label. All right, let's say we find one and we don't like the cable. Let's say it's damaged, the squirrel ate it, rat ate it, mouse ate it, I don't know, whatever problem you have. You need to run some cable? Grab yourself some coax. This is just one that was left over from a Super Bowl party because I usually run a you know, coax all the way out to the projector, hit it up on the side of the building or whatever, and this is just extra cable. I do have another spool upstairs. It's got about 500 feet on it. Got plenty for whatever ails you. But, of course, a regular cable is not going to be enough. So, you need to connect them. So, I got this little kit right here. It comes with a little stripper with both sets of strips. So, you got the uh, outside sheeting and the inside sheeting. Need to do both of them. You can do it with a pocket knife, but it's not that easy. Also, you just get a little pair of uh, cutters. Now, the one thing that's great about these cutters is if you look at it, they're rounded so that it will grab all the way out there and it's not supposed to pinch the cable that much. So these are pretty good. Now, the other simple little thing is this little guy. And what this does, there you go, this right here is my crimper. 
And these are the barrel connectors that I like to use. You are going to stick it into your crimping tool right down here and then boom, close that up, crimp it. You're not getting it off. You're going to have to cut it off. These are one time use only. But like I said before, I did this a long, long time ago, but it's not that big of a deal. So why do we need so many TVs? Well, I got one in my bedroom because you got to have one in the bedroom. Uh, I got one in the living room, one in the office, uh, one on the back porch, one upstairs in this garage, one downstairs in this garage. So that's six already. Also going to need one by the pool. That's seven. And if, if, oh, the kitchen, that's eight. Oh, look, I got eight connections. Hopefully I don't need to go any further than that. If I do, I will just disconnect one of them and run the other uh, off that lead. But anyway, we're going to go mount this to the side of the wall. We're going to run our ground because you always need to have a common ground. And then we're going to call it a day because football is about to start. Got to get it ready. All right. I'm going to meet you on the side of the house. So head on over there. I'll be right there. All right. Well, this is my disaster area. Now, this right here is actually going to be for my cable, uh, cable modem. So that, uh, and yeah, I did not put that up there. Now, this is my disaster. So this cable right here is actually coming from the antenna itself, and then it goes through the four. Obviously, I have eight, so all I'm doing is unplugging one, plugging in another one, unplugging one, plugging in the other one. Don't want to do that anymore. So what we're going to do is get rid of this and take the ground off. All right. So we're going to take this guy off and uh, probably ditch it because we have the new hotness. All right. So what we need to do now is actually go through and tone out each one of these and actually put a label on it because uh, I don't know where they go. Uh, the builder of the house did not label them. So we're going to label them. So I'm going to take my tone generator, stick it to one of the ones in the house and just start from there and work our way backwards. So anyway, be right back. All right, so I have the tone generator inside the house. It is actually in the living room. So which one of these are for the living room? So, nope, nope, nope. There you go. That one right there is for the living room. All right, so we're gonna put a label on that one. Nice and big. Let me do living rooms. Don't forget to take up your trash. Don't trash up the place. All right, do a better job on that one. That one, that one's nasty. Okay, we're gonna get to the next one. Go all the way through the house and make sure that every one of these are labeled. I'm sure you don't want to see that. Catch in a few minutes when it's done. All right, so we got all of our cables labeled. We got our box. I just put some uh, regular screws in to be able to hold it down so it doesn't go anywhere. And also cleaned up. Uh, I'm sorry, Spectrum, not Time Warner. They get upset if you call them Time Warner. They say no, they're Spectrum, but I'm like, hey, it's the same can of crap. Anyway, uh, we have this mounted up. I didn't put my ground wire up to the actual box, so we can actually do that. Now, as far as hooking this thing up, this will be your line in. So this will be from your antenna. This one right here would be for your power outlet. And what I was going to do with that one is actually take one of the bedrooms that I'm not using, because uh, we're not going to put TVs in the kids' bedrooms. They can go out to their main room so we can see what they're watching. Um, I'm going to backfeed the power from that one to be able to power this box up because as you can see, I don't have an outlet out here by the box. I could add one because the panel's right here, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna go send it out to the rest of, uh, back into one of the rooms to be able to get my power. But right into a small issue. Now, this guy right here is actually one of the ones for the garage. This crimp right here was something, yes, I put it in but this is all I had available. Nobody had anything that was available. So I'm gonna put a new connector on this one because this is just a cheap crimp on. I think I used a pair of um, side cutters to actually crimp it on. It works, it's not very waterproof, it's not very watertight, so we wanna change that. So that's where my little kit comes in. Because first you wanna cut it to get rid of that garbage. And as you can see, it cuts pretty decently because it's nice and rounded. All right, so we have our connector and we really want to put a different one there. So you grab a hold of your uh, strippers. Now, on the stripper thing, you want to do like a half an inch back and then cut off everything. Now, this will be the outside sheeting, the inside sheeting, all the way to that bare piece of copper down in the middle. I usually call that the signal wire. Do about a half inch, push it down, 
spin it around a few times boom there you go nice and clean always use strippers they're actually pretty good you can use it with your pocket knife but then it's kind of a pain in the butt use your strippers now for the rest of it you just want to go back just a little bit and go for your second hole which all that's going to do is take the outside but leave the inside alone there you go so i'm just going to leave it flush with the actual crimper or the stripper flip it around and then boom now as you can see i have the outside sheeting then you have the inside sheeting now the little copper stuff i always pull that back but leaving the not the copper but the aluminum the wire pull the wire back so what you want to do is when you grab a hold of your connector if you look deep inside i don't know if it's going to focus but if you look deep inside there's a little sleeve and what that's going to do is go in between the inside uh, jacketing and the actual um, wire wire mesh so you can stick that on and it should be really totally easy there you go but of course i didn't give myself enough room with my label so i'm gonna have to relabel this one good thing i have my labeler so you just kind of twist it on and what you want to do is that little piece of white inner get really close to the inside so now i'm going to take my crimper and what this is going to do here is actually take this outside barrel push it on and the plastic inside is going to wedge against the actual cable and you are not going to be able to get it off all right so you stick it in and just squeeze boom there you go all done pretty and functional get the right tools all right, so now let's go ahead and connect them up. Uh, let's get rid of all these barrels. All right, find your signal wire. Office. Signal. There you go. All right, so there's my signal wire. Wire. Okay, so we want to have power. And what I think I might do is actually run it out of uh, the office, which would be on the other side of the room. We're not currently using, and we're probably never going to use. So I'm going to find that one. There you go. Office number two. And I will feed back power from there. And if you can, now's the time to try to be as neat as possible. Then go ahead and plug in all the ones that you want to use. So I would probably in the very first one is put the one you want to use the most, which would be my living room. All right, so there you have it. We have all of our cables up there. I do have one that is missing, but that would be for the upstairs of the shop over there. I can do that a little bit later, but I wanted to show you this right here. And all I have to do now is go up to my office and actually plug in the adapter and we should be in good shape and I should have full power everywhere. And then we'll check in the garage and make sure we do have power everywhere. All right, so we're underneath the desk of, actually it's my wife's desk, but this is where we're actually gonna connect it up. Now in the kit, you're actually gonna get a little piece of coaxial cable. There we go. All right, uncoil it. And it's as simple as connecting it up. Now the other side, you're gonna connect up to your adapter here. Now on this particular one, I have a surge protector right behind me. So I'm gonna plug it into that. So every time that's on, we should have full power. All right, that's all set up. Now we can get to go back outside and check our progress. All right, so that is all hooked up. This is hooked up. I have my green, I have my green light, so that means I'm getting power. We're getting good signal. So the greatest thing ever is that now I can actually put the cover on that has not been up here in years. I actually had to dig this out from underneath the bush. And the great thing is it almost fits. <laughs> yeah, it's got too much crap on the side, but it's at least up there and it looks a whole lot better. I'm going to clean this up and then we're going to go test it out in the garage. All right, so we got our 50 inch TV down in the downstairs of the shop. So now I can actually get work done on Sunday so I can watch the game and get some work done. Next thing is going to be actually winterizing the, the good old CJ. But let's see if she works. All right, so that is actually fantastic. Fantastic because I could not get ABC earlier. Now the big problem with where we live here is that we have a bunch of stuff south of us and we have a couple of us north of us. So I can either A, put two antennas up, splice them together and we should be good, or you can do a 
uh, there's two different types. There's directional, where you kind of aim it towards the tower, and then you get really good reception. Those things work great, but it's only in one direction. Uh, the one that I have up here is actually a multi-directional, so that we can get the stuff up in Chapel Hill, and we can get the stuff down in Garner, and then we're in actually in pretty decent shape. The only problem is, is that it, it kind of degrades the signal a little bit. Now, I have ABC. Before, I didn't have ABC, especially on these long runs. This is like one of my longest ones. Um, I could get it in the house, but I couldn't get it out here. But now I do, and that's awesome. And look at that picture. That's just fantastic. All right, so that was a very easy thing to today. Uh, but if you, don't, if you don't have enough signal in your house or you have too many TVs, go ahead and get a splitter, but make sure it is powered so it actually boosts the signal. That one wasn't much. I think it was like... 60 bucks, 50 bucks or something like that. But it will be something that's gonna be on the side of the house for a really long time. So go ahead and get out there and fix your problem, just like I did with buying out another uh, module, but getting the right one, do your research first. I'll send a link of the one that I picked up down below, because so far it's fantastic. So go ahead and do that. Make sure it's neat, label everything, so anyway, take it easy, have fun, enjoy yourself. Next time we're going to be working on the CJ to go ahead and winterize it. Uh, winter is coming. It's too cold to run around in an open top Jeep because I get cold. Sometimes. But anyway, take a look at it, have fun, enjoy, and happy holidays.